right, and welcome to the show today. I'm very excited to have with me today uh, Jaron Soren, who is a friend, actually. We, uh, we met out here in the area before he moved away to Caldwell, Idaho, um, where, where now, actually, you are a chiropractor. And you're, I, when I knew you, you were going to school at that point, but now you are full-fledged, schooled, and you're way into your career, it sounds like. And it sounds like you're, you have a pretty decent practice for yourself. Is it Caldwell, or no, I'm sorry, Balance Point Chiropractic there in Caldwell, right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, it's been going great. Been right. here for about two years now, so awesome. after practicing out in Oregon for a couple of years, so it's been great. Awesome, awesome. So you have a number of years under your belt now of, uh, I guess, postgraduate work in chiropract, in chiropractor, chiropracti. How do you say that? Chiropractic. Chiropractic. Yes, chiropractic. As a chiropractor. Care. Yeah, you got <laughs> yeah. it. Got it. Yep. Well, very cool. Very cool. Use words. Yeah. So I'm excited to have you on, and uh, and of course, let's start out. So what would you say has been your one of your dumbest or your dumbest personal finance mistakes so far? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I so I've been thinking about this, right? We um, probably one of my dumbest is um, I think it always comes from buying when I think I need something or, or I, I really want something so bad that I think I need it. Yeah. And then you, you need it so bad that then you buy it and it's you tend to shoot yourself in the foot. So. Probably our biggest um, mistake, my wife and I, is as soon as I finished undergrad, I took a position. I was a greenhouse supervisor down in Arizona and um, immediately went and got a a brand new car and we were planning on making these six-year payments. And, um, you know, we took that sucker home and and, uh, I just didn't feel right about it. Yeah. And so we actually ended up taking it back. So um, it it could have been a really dumb decision and it ended up being not so bad, but... um, I mean, we'd still be paying for that. Well, we probably have paid off by now, but um, I don't know what would have what would have happened. Um, because th- that would have actually been you would have to be making payments during your your graduate work and everything. Right, that right, you didn't right. Even there would have there, there would have been yeah, there would have been no way out of it, right? So I would have had huge amounts of, of more student loan debt than than I left with, you know. And our goal was to leave with as little as possible, as you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, just that increased stress and et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's um, as soon as we were, you know, we were just out of school, we were making a little bit of money and thought we had to spend it as soon as we could, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what kind of cars did you, what were, the, what were the year and model car, how old of cars did you have, I guess, making it through your, uh, your graduate work and everything else? Oh, okay. So um, my parents, so we went to New York Chiropractic College. We were out there in upstate New York, right? Yeah. My, um, my in-laws are actually from that area. So we moved out there. We had sold basically everything that we had and, and moved out with barely anything. Um, and they gave us a, or I get, well, now, yeah, they gave it to us. They gave us a, um, it was a Chevy Cavalier, just a little um, Chevy Cavalier. Yeah. I no, I, I want to say like a 2000 maybe or something like that, you know, yeah. but um, that's what we had. And then, um, we ended up finding a really good deal. We ended up having our second kid while we were in school. Yeah. Um, and we had a we found a really good deal on a Kia Sedona, just a minivan. Okay. So we decided to get that. We actually still have that today. So it's um, it's never given us any problems or anything like that. And it's uh, awesome. Serves our needs, right? So awesome. that's that's what we look at. Yeah, yeah, you have to milk it for what it's worth. I mean, yeah, drive those right. things into the ground and hopefully yeah, exactly save exactly. Your money. And when I, they and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure from what I heard, you're pretty handy, so you can hopefully make things work a little longer sometimes. Yeah, right, but um, <laughs> I guess then you then you start looking at how much is my time worth, too, you know, so it, start, it starts getting to that point where it's, uh, yeah, that that is true. I mean, I, I like to fix things, and I like working with my hands. That's probably why I'm a chiropractor, right? But yeah. um, you got to protect. I, you got to protect those hands now that you're a chiropractor. Yeah, exactly. for more now, important now things. I need to get them insured, right? To make seriously, sure they- <laughs> seriously, those are the uh, million dollar hands or something like that. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. So on the flip side of that, what would you say has been one of your smartest personal finance decisions? Um, probably taking the car back the next day. <laughs> <laughs> that, right, right. That's a that good was, one. I mean, that it could have been a lot worse. That that was kind of our big purchase, and we've done. The hard thing is, is there have been a lot of little purchases along the way. Again, it always comes back to thinking that you need something when you just really, you want it really, really bad. You know, you, you yeah. need it, need it, need it. So, um, but probably the best was, you know, we took the car back, 
when we were again down in Arizona, this was in 2006, and um, I don't know how many people remember what was going on then, but the housing prices were increasing, increasing, increasing. Yeah. Um, we had a gal, a real estate agent, who said, oh, yeah, look at this nice neighborhood. And they weren't even that great at homes, you know, but look at these houses. Oh, my goodness, they're $10,000 more than they were last month. They can only go up. They're just going up. You got to buy now. Yeah. And I looked at my wife, and I mean, we were, you know, we were pretty young right out of college. And I said, you know what? I don't believe it can just go up. I don't, it's, it's not the right choice for us right now. So um, we ended up not buying a house. We ended up, I decided at that time to um, go back to, to, school to become a chiropractor because, um, it's where the passion was, what we wanted to do. So, um, yeah, that, I mean, that was a good decision. Returning the car was a good decision. And really ultimately what, what we look at doing is, um, our goal is just to spend less money than we make. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we try to stuff that nest egg away. Um, we always try to have a little bit, a little bit of a cushion, you know, um, and it's comforting to me to look at the bank account and not have to balance it to the to the cent every single day because I know that I'm not going to I'm not going to bounce a check because I have some sort of cushion in there, you know, yeah. and also setting money aside for savings and and not uh not spending it. Yeah, it's crazy how how much relief that brings, just that extra breathing room of that cushion. Huge stress relief, yeah. I you know, I um one thing for us that I I don't think I've mentioned but um so we decided that it was important for us to have my wife actually home with the kids. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's a hard thing to do. Not, not everyone can do that these days. But I remember when I was in school, um, at chiropractic school, I was talking to some, some older ladies there that worked at the school, at the college. <clears throat> and they said, um, you know, it's so hard today because we, we um, you know, it's, it's hard for parents to stay home. It's almost impossible because it, things are just so expensive. And my response has always kind of been, well, when else in history have we needed to have like 50 pairs of shoes, you know, or yeah. three cars or a 5,000 square foot house? So, um, you know, we, we set our priorities and we try to live by that to, to make it happen. It's so. so true. It's so true. I think it's a lot more possible to live off of one income than a lot of the world would have you believe. It's just you have to go with less. You have to yeah. give up on that Disney vacation and those few other things. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the nice thing is, because um, what we find is, and I, I think it's kind of human nature, like if you grow up in an area, we tend to want to travel far away to go and enjoy things far away. Like Lindsay grew up in upstate New York, and she never even went to um, New York City to, or see the Statue of Liberty or anything like that, you know? Yeah. I was more likely to do that than she was growing up in, up, in upstate New York. Yeah. So we tend to want to go far away. You can do nice things for your family. Yeah. And not have to go really far, you know? Um, yeah. Great point. It's like, yeah. Great you know? point. Well, thank you so much for all those. Uh, and again, we are going to come in with a part two of this in the podcast. And I think you and I are going to talk a lot more about student loan debt and making it through school. So be sure to stay tuned for that. But again, thank you so much, Jaron, for your time today. And, My pleasure. And, and, and be sure to tune in for this next part.